so welcome back to another episode and welcome to the 20th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online. This game right here and it was January 29th, 2001. I can't believe it and I've said it often on the show, sometimes I can't believe uh, the amount of time that has passed because to me it seems like it was yesterday that Fantasy Star Online came out. I remember the night extremely well. It was amazing, it was incredible, and today what I thought I would do is talk about Fancy Star Online. I've done it before, I'm going to cover some ground that I've done before, but what's going to be new is I'm going to show my characters and a lot of their special weapons and special items from 20 years ago. I still have them on BMU after all of this time. And it's amazing to be able to show them and talk about some of the weapons and why I chose these characters and what their names are about and all of that kind of stuff. But to begin with, let me just go back and let me bathe in the nostalgia of 20 years ago because I can't believe that that t much time has gone by already. And I was a big fan, as you know, as you know, of Fancy Star in the 80s. And then we start to hear about something coming out on the Sega Dreamcast. The swan song for Sega, hardware-wise. This was their all, their be-all, end-all machine, and it turned out to be so, unfortunately. But boy, did we ever get some incredible games, some incredible innovations. And Fantasy Star Online was one of those innovations. I mean, Sega was firing on all cylinders back then, and they were giving us something brand new. They weren't giving us another Fantasy Star uh, offline game. They were giving us an online game. And that was a very big deal for console players because we had never played an RPG online before from a console. It was a brand new concept. And I remember nearly 20 years ago for Christmas picking this up. I was uh, visiting my mom and sister and we went to the mall and I was like, oh, I should start uh, getting some stuff ready for Fancy Star Online. And the first was the Dreamcast keyboard. That's nostalgic, isn't it? I think it's a little yellow from all the smoking I used to do back then. I picked up that, I picked up some BMUs, and I picked up the strategy guide. I picked that up maybe about a week after the game had come out, and this is one of the best strategy guides out there for the game, uh, especially giving you some background knowledge on Fancy Star as a whole. What was incredible is I'd never played an online RPG before. So that's why it's 20 years later, it's such a big deal. We live in a time now, and I said it before, where every single game is nearly online. And we, we take it for granted now. We live in an amazing time. But this was in a time, 20 years ago, where you didn't really go online very much. You could do it on PCs, but on consoles, no. Until you put in the 56K modem, and I had the 56K modem at home, and I was like, I remember clicking it in, I'm playing online games on the Dreamcast, and it was something else. It was something to behold. And I remember January 29th quite well, quite well, because it's a very cold night in Vancouver, a very dark night, and I'd worked all day. I stopped at EB Games, I picked up Fancy Star, I had it pre ordered, and I brought it home, Fancy Star Online. And I got home, I put it in, and entered the serial number, and did all that great stuff. And I, and I made my character, and I, I gotta say something here that Sonic Team and Yuji Naka did an amazing job back then with the graphics, and I still think the graphics hold up to this day now. I think they're really amazing. But I remember making my character and then going online for the first time and seeing that wheel. I just got that really weird, kind of creepy music, and I'm like, and then all of a sudden, I appeared in a lobby. And I was talking to a bunch of people online back then, and they were all joining up the same night. We were all getting together the same night, the same time. So I show up, and then all of a sudden, I start to see in this lobby, they showed up as their names from the forums. And it was, a, it was so crazy to me that there was a physical representation of me with my friends, and we could use the keyboard and chat with each other. As before, you know, uh, chatting with a microphone. It did come with a microphone. You could use a microphone, but it's very, you could it only send, you know, short little uh, words or, you know, a couple of words at a time. So they never used that. So they just used the keyboard functionality. 
And it was awesome as well because it was linked to the Japanese servers so you could communicate with Japanese players. It had a, a translating device and that was really exciting. So it could bring both countries and you know all countries together, no matter where you were in the world, you could all communicate with each other using the international translator that was in there. And it, it wasn't super robust, but it was a start and it was really exciting. And then, you know, I could bore you with such details of the amount of adventures I went on with my friends and we you would do the same levels over and over. I mean, the amount of times I did that force level over and over and over, leveling up characters, but it wasn't about that. It was about hanging out with your friends, chatting. Sometimes we just go into the forest level and just talk and just talk about stuff and, and have, a, have a laugh. And that's what we did most times. And then getting together for the boss runs and stuff like that. Very exciting stuff. Uh, great graphics, great soundtrack. Really, the network stuff worked really well. Really well, even on 56K modem. It held up pretty well. There was, there was the occasional drop once in a while that would happen. We'd be playing with a friend and they'd just disappear. That was expected for sure. But it was showing that Sega was trying new things with networking and bringing players together. And they were ahead of their time. They really were. And what an amazing experience it was. And it's one of those ones I will never ever forget. It was like you know, it was kind of like when you went from 8-bit to 16-bit to 32-bit. It was that jump. Uh, the excitement that I had when I played the original Fancy Star, being able to explore different worlds, different planets. That was a big deal in an RPG. That kind of jump, where this gave me the same kind of feeling of a jump uh, forward in technology, in networking, in an experience I've never, uh, you know, I never had before. It was uh, unreal. And now... You know, now I go online and play things like Fantasy Star Online 2, and it's a lot of fun, but it's not that huge jump, right? And just like going from Mario, 16-bit Mario, to Mario 64, those massive jumps are few and far between now in gaming, and I and I think that's why back then it had such a huge impact. Okay, now I'm at the point in the video where I'm going to talk about my characters that I made, and I had a whole bunch of them. And they're still on my BMUs. All these years later, I still have them, and all the characters are still there. So I made a big deal to capture these in high def and really upscale them really, really well to preserve them for myself. And then I thought, hey, I can also show you guys the characters that I made. Now, the first character that I made, this is really funny because it's based on a Sega Master System game. That's the name of the character, was Govelius. I made a Govelius character. He's an android, obviously, and running around, and he had such cool weapons. I made so many weapons for him, and th that's the thing. I ended up getting so far advanced in the game that I started hacking certain items and changing the names of them for my own benefit. I know, I know, because I had basically gone through the entire game and collected almost all the weapons and armor you could get in the game, so my next thing to do was hacking items and making them more powerful, because what else did I have to do back then? Yeah, the one thing I really loved in the game was the Opa Opa Mag, uh, a classic character from Fantasy Zone. So I made sure I got Opa Opa for every single character. And I just loved him running around beside my characters, running through any levels. I always enjoyed that. The other thing I really liked as well for mags was the Mark III mag. That is the Japanese equivalent of the Sega Master System in the United States. So that was awesome. Having that beautiful white console hang behind you as a mag as you're running around the levels. That was so cool. I was I was really uh, happy with what they did with the mags in this game. They really used their imagination and the Sega fandom to bring those to life. Now, my main character was Surge. Uh, he's the character I used all the time. He's my main guy. Uh, the name Surge coming from Chrono Cross, right? Everything had an influence back then. And I loved this character. I had so many crazy weapons with him. Like things like the leaf. You could attack people with a giant leaf, which is so dumb. I also had something I really enjoyed was the Surge Punch. Where you could launch your fists at people. So that was a really cool weapon. I also, there was, there was so many weapons I had with Surge. I couldn't even name them all. But one of the ones that really stood out was the giant battle fan. We had this huge fan, and you're clapping enemies. It's making this powerful sound as you're hitting them. And it was very, very satisfying. Now for my next character, yes, I had this many characters. 
I took some lore from the game's story, uh, from a character called Red Rico. And uh, I made her into a character, she was a main character, uh, in the storyline itself. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I brought her to life that way? And she had some really great weapons as well. She had so many umbrellas for hitting things, and that's why I liked picking so many different kinds of characters, guys and girls, so I could collect all of the weapons and kind of create little themes for the characters. I really loved her umbrellas. Hitting people with those was really a lot of fun. She also had these awesome wings. They were like the angel wing mag, so running around with those was kind of a lot of fun. And also, also, one of the ultimate stupid, awesome mags in the game was the hamburger mag. Yes, you'd be running around with a giant hamburger hanging behind you, and it was like, what were they thinking? Why did they do this? This is awesome. I always loved the hamburger mag. Now, for the next character, I called her Nenny, and that's from Bubblegum Crisis, one of the characters from that, an anime I used to really like. And she was an android, and I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to take this guy, kind of girly character and give her, like, all these amazing guns? And that's what I did her. I had her running around with, like, riot shotguns, just blasting the hell out of everything. I also had her with these panther claws where she could just claw, uh, you know, monsters to death with those. It's so silly and so fun. But I had so many guns for her, it was ridiculous. Like the Burla cannon. I really like that. Yeah, I had her running around with so many weapons. It was awesome. It was laser sightings and stuff like that. But my favorite weapon that she had was the Panzer Faust. It was a rocket launcher, kind of from our time. So having her run around with this giant rocket launcher shooting at enemies, blowing them up, I love that thing. I use that thing all of the time. Now, I had to make a magic using character, and so I went into my Ease lore, and I made a character called Dark Fat. Yes, from the end of Ease Books 1. I, you know, there's the end boss. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna call this character Dark Fact, and if anybody knows the character, they're a cool person online. And I'd be running around, and people would be like going, oh my god, is that a character from Ease? I thought that was really cool. So I had her with a lot of different weapons, and a lot of mags, and stuff like that, and basically mo mostly using magic, but also having a lot of magic items kind of thing. And so I always loved Dark Fact, and anybody who knew who Dark Fact was, was a cool person in my eyes. And it was really strange to to look at some of my characters and see the symbol chats that you could do. You could create your own symbol chats and communicate that way so you could type to people or use the symbol chat or the international translator in there. And seeing some of the symbol chats again, I was like, oh my god, I completely forgot that I made those. And you could save these, right? You could save them and just hit a button on the keyboard, they would pop up randomly. And something else you could do is type little messages and have those saved and hit a button and they would pop up so you could quickly hit something. Kind of like a little saying that you would do and stuff like that. I'd, I'd have Surge running around saying, game over, you lose questions. That was from Samurai Showdown. I'd use little things like that. And I also had Nenny running around talking about how she would destroy Skynet. I don't, I didn't even know what I was going on about back then. Or how a machine, only a machine can kill a machine. I was having a lot of fun, as you can see. I, I really enjoyed what my characters were saying on screen and all of that. I, I was so into this game. I was so into this game that it was ridiculous. And those are my main characters. I made a few other little characters here and there, but they were my main ones. And those are the ones that I collected all of the items in the game with. And I had such a great amount of fun. And it's strange, can you guys believe it, for all of you who were there back then, that it's been 20 years. And 20 years has gone by like that. And I still have friends that I played with from 20 years ago, still to this day, from that game. That's how incredible the game was and what a groundbreaking game and Sega really knocked it out of the park. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better game at a better time. It was perfect. It was the ultimate Fancy Star experience for me and I loved it and I got so much out of it. I had so many fun late nights and let me tell you, I come home at like, oh my God, like 4.30 in the afternoon from work and I would play that game from 4.30. I'd be eating while I'd be playing it from 4.30 till about 1 in the morning. And I, I didn't get much sleep for work, but it didn't matter. 
because who cares about doing all that work back then? What matters is those experiences playing Fantasy Star. Those are the things that I remember 20 years later. And I, I'm so happy I could come in and share some of those experiences with you guys today and show some of my characters. And I think that's probably the last time for a long time I will talk about Fantasy Star Online. Can't believe it's been 20 years. Incredible stuff. So anyways, guys, until next time.